to my channel if you're not already subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video I'm coming back with another public health video but instead of talking about my master's in public health which I know you're probably all tired of hearing about I am gonna be talking about epidemiology I wanted to kind of branch off and discuss different areas of public health rather than just talking about my master's in general so I'm gonna be talking about epidemiology biostats community health community organizing different things that are possible more in detail to help you guys make more informed decisions about pursuing public health as a career so stick around and watch the entire video okay so today in this public health epidemiology video I'm going to be talking about the salary of epidemiologists different jobs you can apply for who you can work for what epidemiology actually is degrees that are required and essentially what people who are epidemiologists do so I'm gonna start out first by reading dictionary definition I don't want to butcher it if I had to put epidemiology in my own words I would say that it is the study of disease frequency and incidence prevalence I mean that's what it, frequency is it's all encompassed but epidemiologists are basically the people who track and trace different health issues within populations whether it's on a national level state level city level town level whatever they are the people who are kind of helping make informed decisions based on the d data they're collecting and analyzing so here is the more specific definition public health aims to provide the basis to prevent disease and promote the health of populations through the study of the occurrence and distribution of health related states or events including the study of determinants influencing such states I feel like that was very convoluted that whole definition just stick with what I said about the study of disease frequency that's all you need to know so what are the different issues that people who are epidemiologists study and I think anything any public health issue is something that epidemiologists study whether it's obesity or an infectious disease such as COVID they are the people who are monitoring tracking tracing evaluating the frequency incidence prevalence of those different issues and then working with people on different teams to come up with solutions to resolve those problems some of the topics that could be evaluated by epidemiologists are as follows environmental exposures infectious diseases non-infectious diseases injuries natural disasters and terrorism those are just the top ones I believe that the CDC listed and that's why I am looking at my computer as I'm reading it but it goes without measure that it could be honestly anything like I said it could be infectious disease non-infectious disease it could be environmental issues and I think when I talk about obesity and cardiovascular disease among certain populations environment plays a lot into the perpetuation of some of those diseases within certain populations but like I said epidemiologists are at the forefront of following what's happening in certain populations so who can you work for if you want to pursue epidemiology honestly think big you can work for anybody you can work at the county level which is still government you can work at the national level still government state level still government but you can always work for government such as the CDC the WHO or local government organizations like the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health that's just one example and that's because I live in Los Angeles so that's the first county that I could think of you could also work for a hospital because I'm sure that within hospitals and I've said this in other videos that they evaluate the prevalence and incidence of certain diseases that happen within their hospital so when you think about back in the day when staphylococcus or so staph infection was extremely prominent epidemiology Epidemiologists were kind of evaluating how many cases were happening at a certain amount of time and from that information you're able to kind of track and figure out okay what's happening where do we need to focus our attention to resolve this issue so hospitals and medical centers are definitely an option non government organizations, nonprofit organizations you could work for a pharmaceutical company as I've said research and development epidemiology is really important and understanding the history of certain diseases is really important so I think that if you were interested in working for a pharmaceutical company or a medical facility you definitely could pursue that you could also teach so you could work for a university and become a professor I don't feel like I am the teaching type which is funny because I make these videos for career savage but no one is asking me questions as I'm talking so it's kind of I feel like it's different making videos is different from actually like teaching in a classroom but you could definitely work for a university and become a professor so those are all the people that you could possibly work for so what degrees are required to be an epidemiologist now I like to do a little bit of research before I make these videos even though I have a general knowledge I want to make sure that I can 
provide additional information. Some jobs say you can have a bachelor's degree with extended research experience, like years of experience. But generally speaking, I don't think it makes sense to pursue epidemiology with only a bachelor's because likely with your bachelor's degree, unless it was a bachelor's in public health, you have never taken an epidemiology class before. You know nothing about epidemiology. And in taking an epidemiology class, a lot of times they also make you take biostats because biostats is very important in understanding epidemiology because there's a lot of calculations and certain like statistical methods that we use in epidemiology. Like calculating the frequency of diseases is a number. Incidence and prevalence is a number. And if you've never taken biostats or you've never taken epi in your bachelor's career, it's probably gonna be harder for you to get a job. So I would say that having a master's is ideal, having a doctorate is preferred. But you don't have to have your doctorate. I think for higher level epidemiology roles, if you wanna be like the head epidemiologist or the head of research and development as within the epidemiology division, you're definitely likely gonna need that doctorate or you can have your master's with years of experience. So how much do epidemiologists make? Epidemiologists and actually biostatisticians make the most, so people like to say, when it comes to like general public health jobs. And the average salary for epidemiologists on a national level is actually $98,000 a year. It's actually 98,000 like 700, so let's just say it is $99,000 a year. That is a six-figure salary. And I almost guarantee that as you remain in epidemiology and you move up, you will definitely have the opportunity to make Make more money. Well, that's all I have for today's video. A nice, short, and sweet for you guys. I hope you found this video helpful for you. If you're interested in pursuing epidemiology, I 100% empower you to do that. I feel like if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now in regulatory affairs, I would 1000% branch out into epidemiology. I always talk about how that class was my absolute favorite. I do love math because I'm a logical person, so numbers make sense to me. If you are interested in epidemiology and you just feel like you're really bad at math and you're not going to be good at it, I promise you it's not as scary as you think. It's not like calculus where you have all these different weird functions and you have to use all this crazy stuff. You do probably have to learn SAS, which is a statistical program, but that's also easier to navigate and the more you work with it, the less hard it will become. So I don't feel like you should be fearful of pursuing epidemiology just because you're not good at math. Make sure you guys leave comments down below if you have more questions about pursuing a career in epidemiology or public health in general. I love making videos in response to the questions that you guys ask me in the comments, so make sure you do that. And make sure you subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. 80% of you are watching my videos, but you're not subscribed to my channel, so you're missing so much good content. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Until my next video.